Hello YouTube world! Thank you for stopping by again. So now that we're in the G Suite, we've gone over uh, setting up the G Suite account and we also uh, took a look at the admin console. Now we're going to step into the Gmail, which is by far the most important app that you can have in your business. You need to have an email to send out emails. Uh, so uh, I already set mine up uh, during the setup process and if you followed along the last video with the setting up the G Suite account uh, you should already have a specific email to log in with I do mine is uh, let me change this here it's not that there actually logged in it's gonna be oh, there it is it's already selected in there for me and I'm logged in. Okay, and these are the set of three emails. This is what I received. The set of three emails uh, that came with the Gmail uh, as soon as I opened it up there. And so just a uh, just a walkthrough about the Gmail here. I got on the right side of my Chrome browser. I have the uh, Get Branding Email. Personalize your email by getting an email address at your domain. That's what you saw over there uh, when I logged in. Uh, so this right here, MrBullServices.com is my domain name. I connected it. While in the uh, in the video of uh, setting up the G Suite account, and the user I selected was demo. So the demo at mrbullservices.com is a personalized email, branded email. Okay, <clears throat> but I'm just using Gmail servers, uh, email servers. So we're not going to get into that. Let's get into the actual Gmail app itself. So of course, like anything, if you want to view a email, you just click on the link there. You click on the actual email. It takes you in, shows you how it shows you that it's now active, which is great. <clears throat> okay, and if you see here, uh, I'm going to the top of the email or next to the four days. If you click on the reply, that's how you can reply to the email. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you reply, you're not gonna get anything back. So delete that. Go back over there. So on the reply, next to the reply button, there's on the right side, there's a more selection. Select that. You can reply, forward. To filter messages like this, so we can get into filtering a little bit later. You can print, add the G Suite team to contacts list. So on your contact list, you can you can add who sent the email to you. Uh, delete this message, block the person who sent this email to you. Report it as spam. Report it as phishing. You can show original, translate message, or mark unread from here. Let's go ahead and show original. So the show original. This is. Uh, this is called a, uh, a header, pretty much. So if you have any type of issues and you're calling support, more than like the email issues, more than likely they're gonna ask you to uh, just send them the header of the email, and this is what you're gonna send them. So if there was an error message or anything like that, anything, uh, this would give them. SPUF records. Which mail servers are permitted to? Send email on behalf of your domain. So this is the IP record. I'm pretty sure if you look up this IP is going to be actually I am sure it's going to be the uh, Gmail IP record search. Google. All right. So that's that. And it just shows you information about the uh, the original message or what have you. So let's exit out of that. <clears throat> All right. Click on that button again. You can show original. Remember. All right. Add the G Suite team to the context list. We'll get into the context list a little bit. Actually, I'll just add it right now. So the sender has added has been added to your context list. Awesome. Above that, we have collapse all, print all, and a new window. Collapse all, collapse to the email. A new window opens up a new window. Okay, self-explanatory there. On the top here, a little further up, you can actually same thing. Mark is unread. Mark is unimportant. Not important. Add the task. Add the star. Create an event. And you can label this email. What type of email it's going to be, or what type of email it's under. It's pretty much like your category section there. Move to. You can move to a different type of uh, any any label. I'm just going to do. Uh, so it's, you can create a new label as well. G Suite. Nest it under a certain label. I'm gonna have its own label. 
So now I have my own label called G Suite and it's in there. If I select the G Suite label, it has that email in there for me. So as you can see, this email is no longer in my inbox. It's actually in the uh, that list, that, that label list G Suite that I created. So I'll move to, I mean, right here, top, move to G Suite. And you see all my emails disappearing? It's because I am moving them into a specific folder. I can't even select the label, label as G Suite. Conversation has been added to G Suite. See, if I add the label to it, it doesn't move into the folder. But if I move to this G Suite folder, it moves it to it. Okay, so that's the difference. Let's go ahead and look at G Suite. Yeah. All right, so they're all, they all moved into that G Suite label folder that I created. And I have zero inboxes now, or zero emails in the inbox. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the compose. The compose is how you compose a letter or email, excuse me. I'm gonna send it to myself. Uh, this, this is a test email, Gmail email. How do you like them apples? Send it, and the message has been sent. You can view your sent messages in the sent mailbox. All right, and now I have the inbox here, and that's me sending it to myself. All right. Get the reply back, of course. I'm not gonna do that. So I don't know if you saw there when I was actually creating the email. Let me show you. I start creating the email, starting to create email. I go in here. You see how it saved the drafts? The drafts showed up here. Click on the drafts. That's actually the email that I started creating over here. And I can actually I can actually exit out of this email and go back in the draft and it'll come back up as I left it. So that's pretty cool. I like that. In case uh, something has to happen, you lose power, you accidentally log out. Uh, Gmail will actually save it in the drafts, so and you can come back at any time and, and pick up where you left off. So that's awesome. Okay, and actually in the label, you can actually uh, show in label list. You can show show within red, or you can hide messages. So that's uh, pretty neat. You can edit the label name. And let me go ahead and show you nest label under. It's actually select the parents. I don't have any parents set up. <clears throat> All right. So if you go here, let's go to the uh, settings tab. So if you're in the toolbar, actually let's let's start over here on the left side and work our way to the right side. So you see where the mail button is at there, the drop down menu. Select that. You can actually go into the contacts as I was telling you a little earlier about the contacts. And there's my contacts. G Suite Team is my contact. If I select there, you can actually uh, give it like a little note. Um, what a great team. What a great team. Go G Suite. All right. Do the address. I want to say, I forget their address. Is it Mountain View, California? Menlo Park. Oh, that's where I was founded at. Should show me the headquarters. The Googleplex Mountain View. Yep. Right on the money. Okay. It is Mountain View. I, I do know my uh my tech giant addresses. All right. So that's where they're, uh, yeah, that's the work. Mobile number, I'm just gonna do 1-800. They should get this e uh, number, 1-800 Google. Google it. 1-800 <laughs> Google it, that'd be their mobile number. Their work number will be 1-800 Google. All right, and now we can add. We can add different things, we can add a name, a title and company, 
phonetic name, nickname, file as, notes, emails, etc. URL. I'll, I'll go ahead and put a URL there. All right. And that's pretty much it. That is the, um, I actually add a picture as well. <clears throat> this is setting up just a contact list here. Uh, so I'm just going to put Gmail. Like this one. All right. Oh, okay. And I say, save that image there. Let's go ahead and add the image, add the picture. Gmail. And I'm pretty sure there should be a. Uh, a certain dimension that they would prefer. I'm just going to use this one. All right, and there it goes. There goes our, our new contact. So our new contact is the G Suite team. And we have a couple notes here. We have the work information. We have their, e, their URL. We have the email here. Uh, so we're good to go. And there's, as you can see, there's no save button or anything. It actually saves automatically once you start inputting the data. So every time you, you enter a field, it will automatically save. That's the beautiful thing about Google here and Gmail. For most contacted, of course, it's the only one I've contacted so far, thus far. Directory, a new group. We'll put uh, email providers. Email providers. And if I want to add... Here we go, email providers. Okay, so if I actually select my, select the G Suite team contact, I can actually move it. Where is it? Add to my contacts, groups. Here we go, groups. You see here that your default country for phone numbers and contact is United States. It is, so I'm going to accept that. All right, now you can add to my contacts. You can add to the groups, which I want to do. Email providers. Actually, take it off of uh, my contact so you can see the difference. See, it's gone now. It's not in the my contact se section. It's in the email providers group. All right, and here we go. It's labeled email providers for you. Let me see. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's in compact, so you can actually uh, change the display here. Compact, cozy, comfortable. I think the default is comfortable. Cozy. You see, it's just a, a different type of uh, design. See, everything gets compressed uh, once you uh, raise or lower it. It gets compacted. I'm gonna put comfortable. Gives it a little bit more space there. So that's how you set a, a new contact. Let me just do another new contact. I actually added that new new guy. All right, and job title. Well, he's new and new company. And his email, work email, is new at newcompany.com. And his work phone number is, uh, let's say, uh, 409 new guys. Guy one. New guy one. And his address is uh, mobile. He doesn't have an address, he's a mobile worker. He's a mobile worker. Look out. All right, and we added. So your six changes the new guy has been saved automatically. Of course, you can do undo all these changes, or you can just undo the last change. I do that, and it takes away the notes, because that's the last thing I put. New guys, finish. Last. <laughs> you guys finished last question mark and you can also save now see so if you don't like waiting for them to automatically save for you can save it now so that's the context there let's go ahead and go to tasks and you can see it doesn't it doesn't take to an actual task page it brings a, uh, a button here or a, a menu excuse me and I can actually pop out 
this screen and move it around instead of it being dragged in you can pop in you see here pop in bring it down to the right uh, the bottom right corner it'll pop out and here's a task this is one of my first tasks here still haven't gone through all of it um, so actions can indent unindent move up move down edit details if you have more uh, list or tasks you can you know move up down etc you can be able to do all these things you complete a task of course I'm on the view completed task already I can clear complete a task complete a task are gone all right edit details I don't have anything to edit so we can add new list here so let's go ahead and add a new task in this my list all right, my new task. All right, okay, enter and a new one will come up. But actually, if you want to go into detail with this uh, task, hit this arrow on the right there. And here's going to put a due date, the 23rd. Get it done. And then, of course, you can move to whichever list you have. I only have my list for now. And it's done. So, I go to my list. I'm on my list. Let's go ahead and add a new, a new list. New list. This is uh, where's I put new list? New list. All right, this is my new list. This is a new task in a new list. All right. I'll leave that as is. As you can see, you don't have to fill that extra information, uh, but it is if you want to. All right, my list is my new task, and then new list is this is a new task in my new list. All right, let's go ahead and check mark this one and show you what happens. So I'm gonna go back to my list here. We'll go view completed task. As you can see in my list, the view completed task was the one I deleted, I just cleared, which is Google Go Over G Suite apps. So specifically for this list, let's go ahead and go to my uh, new list, and then view completed task. Of course, you'll see this is a new list. This is a new task in a new list. If I clear it, how would it go? Where'd you go? I miss you so. Hmm. Here we go. Let's go ahead and move this over here. Doesn't happen again to us. All right, so the complete task and clear complete list. We've already done all that. Do it again, and of course you clear it, but it still stays in your view complete list. All right, viewing my order, view complete task, and it can actually print your task. You saw that print task list, email task list. Let's go ahead and email that. course I just emailed a blank list because uh, I did clear the completed task on there of course you can show tips if you need any tips click anywhere in the list below and hit enter to enter insert a new task awesome access tasks on your mobile phone no doubt Google task wow that's pretty cool all right so a little intro uh, details there instructions and if I if you don't want this list of course you can delete the list Delete list and deletes it. The list has been deleted. All right, now we're back on my list task. View completed task is to go over G Suite as the one I just deleted. All right, so yeah, you can just play around with that there. <clears throat> if you're if you're a go getter, you know, if you want to uh, set list, you need, you need to have goals, something to go after there. So uh, implement that. Go ahead and take a take a look at the comp, the task underneath the uh, Gmail account. So mail context tasks, and that will help you out there tremendously. Of course, you add new groups. Oh, we've already gone through the whole context. Let's go into the actual settings of the Gmail. Okay, so you see this gear icon here, the top right corner below your uh, your icon. Get a picture there. You should see your picture. We already went over the uh, display the density. Comfortable, cozy, compact. You configure your inbox. 
Okay, so it's just a matter of uh, the tabs to enable, primary social promotions, updates, forms. And I'm just going to leave it default for now. Then next, of course, this is the most important aspect of your entire uh, system here is the settings tab. So why did it show me? There we go. I don't know why it showed me the list at first. So we're in the settings. You can see there's two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten tabs. Uh, trust me, not all tabs have this uh, in-depth details here. But let's just go over it. So your language, that's going to be English for me, U.S. Of course, this is my business example. That's supposed to be your business name. So whatever you signed, your, signed up with, or whatever business name you signed up with, it's going to show there. This is my business example mail display. Then phone numbers, default country code. I already accepted that was the United States. Uh, the maximum page size, 50 conversations per page, 250 contacts per page. You can always change that, of course. Your images. So if there's images in your email, do you like seeing them uh, automatically or would you like to uh, give permission to, to show those to you or not? Uh, you can select those two, whichever ones you decide. Can undo send so enable undo send so if, if you want to uh, undo your send what it says pretty much uh, you can select that and then default reply behavior you can reply you can reply to all a little bit more information if you want to look into that learn more reply to messages make reply all your default settings so you can reply only to the person who sent you an email or to everyone who received the email okay and me personally, I would go ahead and just put the uh, reply just to singular, not not to everyone. You can always uh, CC or BCC someone else into that email. Really up to you, though, preference there. Uh, so default text style. Of course, we have your sans serif. You have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven fonts you can choose from, and the four sizes you can choose from. Of course, the color of text. And the formatting. Okay, I'm gonna leave it default for now, but of course, you can give it its own unique look. You know, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Of course, conversation views sets whether emails of the same topic are grouped together. Uh, that can be beneficial if you like uh, being very organized there. Uh, send an archive, so hide, send an archive button, and reply. So, archiving is pretty much it'll take it away from the inbox and it'll just set it in a okay, we've already. We've already looked over this email, the archive files. That's what that does. I'm just hiding that that option in the in the reply. So that if you if you show it, there'll be a send an archive button as opposed to just a reply button there. So drag the stars between the list. You can uh, star your your list there. It's pretty neat. Desktop notifications. I don't have any notifications set. Uh, not in this Gmail account, of course. Just G Suite account. Keyboard shortcuts, it's pretty cool if you, if you like sh shortcuts. Um, it goes over a couple shortcuts you can use. Composing chat, formatting text, actions, hangouts, jumping, you know, all that good stuff. So if you like, if you like a uh, shortcut, go ahead and select on. I'm going to leave it off. Button labels, I like icons, I always like icons. In my picture, you can select the picture that everyone will see when you email them. Uh, so, be sure it's a good picture. Because <laughs> whenever you send the email, I'll be able to see your, your, your image, whatever picture you selected for your icon, for your right here. The top right corner, of A, I replace it with the picture. That will be will be sent out within with my emails. Okay, you can do people widget, display information about participants to the right. Of each conversation, okay, I like having that showing the detailed information. If you have their information, like we set up the uh, contact list, uh, the same thing. You'll have their information, their everything that you have right there. So I've always been asked this question here about signature. This is where you do it. So once again, settings, top right, settings tab, and then scroll down in the general section, and that your signature will be right here. So you can actually select your signature. This is my is my boss signature if you're a boss you gotta sign like a boss all right anyway 
It's going to be my signature for now. He will. Thanks. Enter the signature before quoted text and replies and remove the dash dash line that precedes it. So what does that mean? So whenever you send an email, I'm not sure if you've seen this before. Let's go ahead and send one right now, actually, since I have this. Well, let me go through this, and I'll, I'll show you. Uh, personal level indicators. Uh, show indicators display an arrow by messages sent to my address. Not, any, not a mailing list. And a double arrow by messages sent only to me. Okay. So it actually shows you uh, if this was a, a mass email sent out to multiple people with just a one arrow, the greater than sign, or if it was sent out only to you with two arrows, uh, two greater than signs there. Of course, you can have snippets, uh, show snippets of the message, like Google Web Search, little snippets, just like a little preview of what the email has to offer, or what it has inside, excuse me. And then, of course, the vacation responder. Vacation responder, I've never used this before, but actually just looking at it, just uh, I really need to because I actually am coming up for vacation here soon. Uh, making these lovely videos for you, you know, you got to have vacation. And uh, you can actually send who's going to see the response. So people in my contacts will only send a response to people in my, my business. If this, if these aren't selected, it's gonna the vacation responder will be sent out to everyone. Okay, so I can send set it, vacation responder on. And the first day is going to be today. Last day is optional. I'm going to leave it as is because I'm going to be a vacation for life. Vacation for life. Hey there. I am on vacation. Email me some other time. Do not put this as your vacation responder. <laughs> All right. And let's go ahead and take a look here. You know what? I actually don't like this. Uh, I really don't like those lists there. So yeah. All right. So I took off those tabs because I didn't like them there. And let's go ahead and compose another one. Demo, do you see this is my boss signature? So this is a little dashes here. Uh, once you send the email, your signature is actually going to be hidden. And I'll show you that right now. Hidden signature. Hi. And we'll see the auto responder, auto responder as well. Uh, let's see. All right, hi, hidden signature. So you see the hidden signature there, the two dot, three dots there, show trimmed content. Select it. This is my boss signature, a able L. So that is uh, what that was talking about in the settings. It doesn't seem like I got the uh, responder here for me. Very strange. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there it is right there. It's actually being hidden by the uh, loading. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah. All right, so that's that. That's in the snippets there, or excuse me, the uh, autoresponder. If you don't want the, if you want to remove that dash dash, I can go ahead and select that. If you don't mind that, you can go ahead and leave it as is. And here are the labels. So every here, everything here on the side, inbox, start, sent mail, uh, you can show it. So for example, I show the important. I can hide the important label. I can show spam. Or I can hide the spam. Or I can actually select this one. If it's unread, you can show it. Uh, so I don't have any unread spam there. And of course, the category is the same way. Create a new label if you want. New lab. You can nest it. You have to. You do have to set a, uh, a different label here. I got a G Suite label already. Go ahead and select it in the G Suite. And create a new label. And as you can see, my new label is underneath the G Suite. So the G Suite is the parent label. Of course, the new label will be under there. And I can show and hide it. So if you drop down to the G Suite, you see the new label. I can hide that label. And I don't know why it's not hiding. <laughs> is it supposed to be? I guess since it's in the, uh, since it's in the parent label, you'd actually have to hide the parent label itself as well. Alright. 
Oh, show a message less. Okay, so see, once you go into categories, labels, it gets a little bit um, a little more options here. So show and message list, the actual message list or the label list, which is the label list is right here. I can hide it, and you see the G Suite's no, no longer there. If I show it, it's there. If I show in message list, that's a different thing. All right, so uh, make sure that if you're trying to hide labels, show labels. Make sure we're showing them, hide them in the wrong list, uh, the right list, excuse me, in the right list. The wrong list would be just as lost as I am right now. All right, so go ahead in the inbox tab, type, uh, you do important first, unread first, start first, priority inbox. I'm gonna leave that as default. Categories, leave it as primary. Remember we had those tabs already. I really didn't like the tabs up there uh, in my inbox, so I deselected all of them, except for the primary. Important markers, if you wanna message, or if you wanna mark messages, uh, with a certain marker there, like yellow, pink, green, whatever, uh, you can do that. Uh, I'm not gonna do that here, but uh, you can, all right? And then filter messages, if you wanna include certain particular messages that have a certain content in them, you can uh, filter your mail, okay? So your accounts. Okay, this is what I was telling you in the, in the first video here, I'm getting started setting up G Suite. You can actually have uh, different aliases, right? So I had an, another alias, info at mrbullservices.com. Here you can actually add another email address. And you won't want to treat this as an alias. Uh, so you will deselect that. Actually, learn more if you'd like. So should I uncheck treat as an alias in Gmail? So if you want to send and receive messages in, in my Gmail box, you would check the treat as an alias box. Okay, if you want to send on behalf of another user or account, which is what I do. So if I want to just send it from info at mrbullservices.com and not demo at mrbullservices.com, you're going to uncheck the treat as an alias. So it'll be a, it's technically its own, well, yeah, it's kind of its own separate email account. I mean, it's going to be within your, demo, your, your actual main email account, but you'll be able to use it as its own separate email account. It'll, all the emails will be sent into your, your main account, but you would also be able to send and receive uh, emails with a, a different different email. So if I do that, I'll probably hit again. There it is. All right. If I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put info at mrservice.com. I'm not going to treat it as alias because I want to send from this email and receive from this email. And there it is. There it is. I just sent from that. So actually, let's go ahead and compose. There's a drop down menu in the front. And now you can see info on mrbullservices.com. Test non. Test non alias. My test. Your message has been sent. All right. And as you can see, this was sent from mrbullservices.com. And if you want to reply back to it, look, reply to, boom. So it could be from, if you look at from, demo at mrbullservices.com, or I can drop down and I can actually send it from info at mrbullservices.com. Sending from non alias email. right and what I want to say here is actually I did not set the uh... okay here we go no I did send it did send oh it was already set actually you can see it was from info measurable services to info measurable services .com. this one was from info measurable services .com to demo at measurable services .com. all right so that's that's what you want to do if you want to have a, a separate email and not send from the same main email account you will do a non alias when you're setting up uh, the new in the settings tab here settings accounts when you add another email you'll select treat you would unselect treat as an alias okay all right it's the fun part there and add you can add a mail account so if you have another mail account from other other providers there 
you can do it here. Uh, so you actually select it. Let's go ahead and go into the process. I'm going to use the uh, non-alias here but just to see, walk you through here. So you add in a mail account. This is actually specifically from, uh, let's say if you have another hosting provider and you have uh, their, you're using their webmail services, uh, which I would not recommend to do if, if you're gonna be using email. I mean, just go with the Google Apps. I mean, it's secure. They're very. I'm not sure if the hosting pack, if that hosting provider, might be a reseller, might be uh, someone in their garage. You know, which is not a you know not entirely a bad thing, but uh, it might be some uh, that twelve year old little boy that doesn't even know what he's doing, uh, running a, a server from a different from another hosting provider. Uh, either way, regardless, uh, if you still want to use their email, you go ahead and select the insert their information so your username username is going to be anything before the at you know at dot domain dot com whatever your domain is at domain dot com so in this case my email address is info at mr. services dot com my username is going to be info info put in the password that you log in to your webmail with okay your password there all right and then you go ahead and select your pop server uh, I, I kind of go against going with pop uh, mainly because uh, the pop what that does is it's not it doesn't synchronize throughout your your entire devices, uh, so this is not a uh, you know an email one on one class here. So I'm not going to go into depth in that. But uh, if if you were if you were going through let, let's let's continue and actually it, it's in the next section here. So filters and block actually the next one after this. So filters and blocked addresses. If you want to filter any type of income or incoming email. You can here. So create a new filter. Uh, let's say from info at miserableservices.com to uh, demo at miserableservices.com. Subject, test, as the words, filter, doesn't have, non filter. All right. And then greater than sign, you can, you know, uh, filter it the amount of size, less than or greater than. Amount of size there, create a filter with search. All right, when a message arrives that matches this search, skip the inbox. Okay, mark as read, star it, apply the, the label. Okay, forward it, delete it, never send it to spam. Always mark it as important, never mark it as important. Categorize as, and categorize it. Also apply filter to zero matching conversation. So, so whatever you have here that has this words, you can create a filter with this search. And you can tell it what to do. You can automatically tell it what to do here. So, if the if the subject is test, go ahead and apply apply it to a G Suite new lab, which is a new label there. So let's create the filter. All right, and I want to say it was test. All right, so if it's coming from, if it's going to demo and it's coming from info. We'll go ahead and put test, and if it has test, and if it has, what was the, well, let's go ahead and send it, see if it, it sends like that. And I don't think it, it, it okay, so I didn't do a label, so I, I probably didn't, I didn't match the filter. Let's see here. Filter, edit. Has the words filter. Okay, let me go ahead and try that one more time. Info test has the word filter. There we go. You see, so in the actual email, so it's not just the, the subject, it has to be at what you put in there. So I had the test as the subject, and I had the filter as the word within the email. And once the once it once it arrived in my email box, I it went ahead and picked it up. Like okay, this is a filtered email. Go ahead and add the new label label to it, and which is what it did here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I really like that actually. Uh, all right, so that's filters, and of course you can block addresses here. The following email addresses are blocked, so you can create new ad, uh, create new blocks there. All right, so back to the, uh, the the POP and the IMAP, the pop and the IMAP. Uh, so the difference, the main difference here is the IMAP, it synchronizes throughout your entire devices there. Uh, POP download, you're going to download it to your specific client, to your specific email client. So Outlook, 
Um, it's, it's the main one. There's Outlook, Thunderbird. Of course, I got Mail right here. Mail uh, in the in the iCloud there. So the pop will just go into that specific whichever one you configure to. The email will go in there, and it won't it won't be synchronized throughout your entire devices. So that's why, and it won't actually save on your webmail server either. If you're if you're using a webmail server, uh, besides Gmail, it won't save on there. It will actually just download to your to your client. So that is why uh, I always recommend IMAP. So if you have more than one device and you want your emails to be synchronized throughout the entire devices, uh, go ahead and select IMAP. Okay, and I script right over forwarding, and you add a forwarding address. So you can also if if you create uh, this creating this goes up by creating a filter as well. So creating a filter and forwarding an address, you can uh, create a filter. It's like okay if the message has forward message, uh, forward it to this this email address. You can add a you can add a new forwarding email address here, and then select the creative or create a filter. Uh, so wh whenever the email meets its criteria, it will send to the forwarding email address. So. This is going on a little bit longer than I expected here, uh, but it is a, 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 a big application here, Gmail. Email is the, I believe, is the most important uh, way to communicate now. Uh, so in, the landlines are, are, are done with here. Cell phones are, are pretty good here, but not uh, everyone has the time to uh, pick up the call. Uh, a lot of people prefer text, to be honest. Uh, I do, at least. And email, email though, Will, oh, let your email box, and you know, eventually they'll look at it. Hopefully, they'll look at it, right? If it's a if it's a new client that you want to obtain, uh, you know, email will be the best way to go. Um, so, I guess you call it cold email, and if you don't if you don't know your prospects, if you're just introducing yourself there. Anyway, so go to chats. You have chat on, chat off. You want to have my chat history? Never say chat history. That just goes into chat functionality in here. All right. Of course, you got your labs. It's a couple of uh, experimental stuff, as you can see here, and it's just uh, I guess more functionality, additional functionality to the application. And you can go through that. I'm not gonna go through the lab section there. Really, you don't need it. Uh, offline, of course, you can install Gmail offline. Uh, if you don't want to be online here, if you don't have internet connection, this may be a ideal here for you. And of course, your themes. You can set a theme. I've always loved chess, and actually today is a, a chess game, not a chess game, a, a chess meetup today, so definitely going to attend that. All right, and there's my theme. And of course, you can manage this domain. And send feedback and help. And of course, you do the themes right here, change it as, again. I like the chess. Of course, your settings and then themes, and this uh, manage this domain actually takes you back to the admin console, which we did in the uh, setting up the account. So I'm not gonna go through that. I already showed you how to do that in the first video. And last thing here, if you go in the bottom of the compose section here, you can share your status. Hey, hey there. Smiley face. All right, and that's my status. See that? Hey there. Your status will be visible to everyone you use Hangouts with, showing you were last active, showing the device, which device you're on, showing you're in a video or phone call on your devices, notifications, unmute them, and sounds for incoming, convert text to emoji, archived Hangouts, invites, hidden contacts, block people, customized invite settings. That's actually for Hangouts, which is a different application. We're going to go through that next, or, or, or not right after this one actually the next one's gonna be docs so that's gonna be it here for the gmail i do apologize if it's a little bit longer than you expected here but uh, we went through the entire gmail so uh, if you don't you know if you want me to do a step-by-step -step, like how to send an email or you know how to send a uh, label everything i did here pretty much but you wanted it in smaller chunks two to five minutes preferably uh, let me know and i'll go ahead and do that for you uh, i'll be more than welcome to this is this is fun for me i love uh, i love testing software and yeah so anyway uh, thanks for stopping by and we we'll hope to see you here again for the uh, for the mobile version of gmail uh, stick around see you soon